In this lesson, I want to talk about something that's going to be of interest to maybe just a few users watching this, but it's how to dig into the SPL2 source code. So let's go ahead and dive in and figure out what's going on. So SPL2, again, the great part about it is that it's open source. You can read and are encouraged to read the license here, speaking to the Zlib license and what happens if you use the source code. In general, it's pretty free to use. If you make alterations, you need to mark them. But anyway, what I want to show you is going to the Git and actually the GitHub repository and just downloading the files. I've already downloaded those files and extracted them here. And what I want to show you is just how I like to search through the code so that you always know what's going on. Again, this is going to be a short video because I don't think it's going to be of interest to everybody. But if you really find yourself in a tough spot, here's what I like to do in SDL especially if there's no documentation or not enough documentation for a function. So, for example, last time we used one of the functions, SDL, and perhaps I really want to know what's going on. What are the possible flags? How do I sort of follow the breadcrumbs so I understand what's going on behind the system? So what I can do in my window is grep for that function. So I'm going to do grep IRN SDL init, the function name, and dot. And I'm going to get a lot of stuff. And this is going to be a little bit overwhelming. But with a little bit of practice, we can sort of filter through this a little bit. So for example, there's many different uh, includes or header files that are making use of the SPL in it. So maybe that's of interest. Uh, in fact, we also find that there's some handy demos here too, which might be interesting for samples and learning SPL. But if I sort of scroll through this enough, uh, maybe past the test cases and so on, I'll eventually find a file that may be interesting, perhaps in the source directory where sdl.c is. And that might be a good place to look for the original declaration and the definition of this function, trying to understand what's going on in SDL2. Again, so what I can do here is now open up that source file, sdl.c, and search within it. SDL init, which I'm doing in the uh, bottom left corner of my screen. And I'll find um, this function or some similar ones. Here's the actual function, which ends up just calling SDL in its subsystem. And you can sort of follow the paper trail from here. So what I'm showing here is just how these systems are initialized, how to dig through the SDL to source code a little bit by grepping, and that it's not too scary. And it tends to be relatively well documented. All right, so I just wanted to show a little introduction into that uh, if you really want to get your hands dirty with SDL. 